All righty. Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here today. Uh, my name is Sebastian. I'm a software engineer in the Visual Studio version control team. And today, we're going to be going over mastering Git in Visual Studio. This will allow us to tell better stories so that our code reviews are easier, so that our repository's Git history tells the story of the present changes and the previous changes that have happened in the past, and so that we can abstract all of those tedious Git concepts so that we can focus on what we love to do, which is programming or vibe coding, which is what they say today, right? All righty, so I'm going to be going over the workflow that I do on my day to day. So some of the con concepts I'm going to be talking about within Visual Studio represent the Git repository window. This is where you're able to see your repository's history locally and both remotely. Then I'm going to be talking about the Git changes window. The Git changes window is where you take your application from prototype to production ready. So that Vibe Code app that I'm going to be showing, we're going to clean it up in the Git changes window so that I can push it to the server and have everything nice and neat for my teammates to review. And then we're going to talk about the create pull request window. This is where you're able to create that story, right? Right in the IDE without having to change different windows to the browser to different tabs. And then we're going to be talking about our new review pull request feature. This is where you're able to see the comments all within the IDE, where your teammates left comments, you can respond to them. But even better, you can navigate code without, again, having to go to the web browser. And of course, this is all going to be sprinkled with a little bit of AI, right? We've heard a lot about that today. We're going to see how Copilot can maximize and boost your productivity with Git in Visual Studio. So let's go ahead and jump over to the web browser. All righty. So I have this Aspire application here. It's going to be an image gallery. And oh, not over to the browser. Let's uh, thank you for pointing that out. There we go. OK, now we're on the browser. And I have this Aspire application. It's an image gallery. And as you can see, there's a lot of errors at the moment. So this is something that happens when you're vibe coding and prototyping as you run into issues. Now, one of the things I could do is go ask Copilot to help me fix these issues. But I was paying attention in stand-up the other day. And I remember Bob saying that they fixed a similar issue to this. So let me go over to Visual Studio and see what Bob did. So if I go over to Visual Studio, and on the top left, you're going to see that I'm going to go to the view. Let's see if you can see it. Go to view, Git repository. All right. Now, once I do that, this is that first component I'm talking about. Here, you're able to see a detailed view of your repo, the local history, but also the local branches, the remote branches, and also the tags that point to specific commit to mark a milestone. Now, as you can see, I have one of Bob's branches to add image loading. So if I click on that branch, the Git repository will update the history. And if I double click on that commit that had the image loading, I can see some commit details. In these commit details, I can see the changes that Bob made. And it's pretty much at adding some configuration to the webpack config to allow to handle proper image handling. Now, if this was a very complex commit, I could utilize Copilot over here with this explain button. And it'll help me understand what those changes did. Right, because sometimes commits can be large. They can have multiple files. Now, this is a rather simple commit. So Copilot let me know that we added a Webpack rule to be able to support images. So what am I going to do now? Well, once I close this window, one of the other things that you can do within the Git repository window is perform a lot of different Git commands. So if you right click on the commit, you can see that we have different Git commands that we can perform. This can be done for commits. It can be done for branches and for tags as well. Now, because I want to bring that over to my branch, the thing I'm going to do is specifically cherry pick. I'm going to cherry pick those changes into my branch so that I can now run my application. So let's try ahead and do that. Right click, cherry pick, and you'll see a notification on the top left saying that that has successfully uh, completed. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to relaunch my application. All righty, let me close the previous. Trying to connect to the server. Let's 
see if I refresh that. There we go. Perfect. And now hopefully Bob's changes worked. And they did. Now we're actually properly handling images within this vibe coded prototype application. And I pretty much just have it so that I can navigate left and right through different images. Now this is a product, a prototype application I built, but now I want to construct that story and make it, you know, like a scalable application production ready. So let's go ahead and jump to the Git changes window. Same way that we got into the Git repository window, on the top left, we're gonna click view and then Git changes. So once I do that, perfect, I'm gonna pin that. And you're gonna see that I have about a total of 16 changes on that Git changes window. Now, that's a lot. And I don't wanna just create one commit and push it and get ready for a pull request. I wanna break things down to tell a better story so that my teammates can review my code a bit easier, right? Like I said before, this is where I take that prototype, I polish it, and I get it ready for review. Now, one of the things I really like from this window is that when I double click on a file, for example, this app.js, in Git, I could stage the entire file all at once, but again, if I'm trying to break things down into little problems, I can stage them either by code blocks or by lines of code. So for example, if I hover over here, imagine I'm trying to create a commit where I'm adding images. So I'm gonna go ahead and stage that particular code block where I add the images. I'm also gonna go ahead and stage the change for having a list of images on the website. And then over here, I am gonna actually go ahead and stage the folders where I added those images. So again, I'm breaking things down commit by commit to make it easier for review. Now, if this was a very complex change, whether it be through architectural design or technical changes, I can get Copilot to also review my code right from the IDE. So instead of having your teammates first review your code, you can have Copilot right from the IDE if you click this button. As you can see there, it's reviewing the changes, right? And it's gonna give me suggestions. Now, my vibe coding code apparently is perfect, so there's no comments, so that's good for now. So I'm ready to commit that. Another way that you can utilize Copilot though, is that if this was a very tricky change, you could have Copilot generate a commit message for you. So for example, on this bottom right Sparkle Pencil, it can generate a commit by just clicking on it, It'll generate the message. And then again, very simple commit where it's adding some sample images. But if it was a lot more complex and you're trying to break it down, it's easy for Copilot to review that code and create that commit message for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept. I'm gonna commit the stage changes. And now I'm gonna go ahead and push. All righty. Now, one of the things that I love about the Git changes window is that once you push, you'll see that notification on the top right. And I'll go ahead and zoom into it really quick. Here, you can create a pull request within Visual Studio or in the browser. But again, I no longer want to context switch. I'm in the flow. I want to do everything from the, the IDE. So if I create the, um, hit the create in Visual Studio, you'll see that a new pull request window pops up. This is very similar to what you see on GitHub or Azure DevOps, and it's supported for both. So within the create pull request window, if you add a title, you can also utilize Copilot to generate a description if you wanted to. And then you can create this as a draft or as a regular pull request. You can view those commit details that we talked about earlier to review your changes. And then you can also add reviewers all within the IDE. Again, this is the moment where you're creating your story the one that you wanna share with your colleagues, your teammates, so that they get ready to review your code. Now comes the part of actually reviewing things. So let's say that you already published a pull request and let's go ahead and check out a branch. Let's go ahead and stash my changes. And as it's checking out, I'll go over to the Git changes window. And I want you to note that it, uh, it kind of identified that there was already a pull request on Azure DevOps or GitHub. So it says branch has an active pull request. Again, not once have I gone over to the web browser to navigate through different tabs, switch context. I'm all within the IDE, staying in a flow. 
So the thing I can do is go ahead and show comments and files. And when I click that, you'll be able to see that hopefully my file opens with some comments. So Bob goes ahead and comments on my code saying, do you want this code or can it be removed? I can reply directly from the IDE. So I'll go ahead and remove and I'll reply. Perfect. And so that'll directly take change on GitHub. Now, if I also wanted to navigate the comments, I could do that as well. I can see that I have some uh, knit fixed spacing over here. I can also like that. Or I can navigate the files as well, file by file. So this is the review pull request feature. You've already shared your story. You have it within the IDE. And again, you don't want to switch context. The beauty of this is that you're able to navigate the code a lot easier instead of on the server where you might not have the ability to do that. Now, I know we've gone over a lot of different things, especially a lot of different features within Visual Studio and Git. So trust me, I understand if you did not get all of it. But the one, four things that I want you to take away is the main windows that we have to enhance your flow with Git and Visual Studio. That first one is the Git repository window. If anything, this is where you can view your history for your Git repository. You have your local branches, your remote branches, and your tags as well. Then the Git changes window. This allows you to polish up your code from vibe coding to prototype to production ready. The create pull request window allows you to create your story and share it with your colleagues. And the new review pull request feature allows you to view those comments within the IDE so that you can quickly make changes and iterate on the, on the reviews that they gave you. And of course, this is all sprinkled with a little bit of AI to maximize and boost your productivity with Git and Visual Studio. Alrighty, thank you all for today. If you have any questions, find me later. Thank you.